the John Paul Feely. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister, and uh, for your very comprehensive briefing. Uh, I'm very heartened by the ambition of the department in terms of increasing the social housing stock by 50,000 over the next five years. Uh, we note that the studies um, that investigate the economic well-being of disabled persons and persons with disabilities regularly show that we that they are disadvantaged economically. So while I very much uh, welcome the plans for inclusion for disability needs in housing across all types of housing, social, affordable and private, I think we should make particular provision in terms of social housing. So, so on that, I'm, I'm very heartened to see the figures that 10% uh, of all social housing over the last 10 years was allocated uh, to, pe to pe persons with disabilities. Uh, but can you maybe give me an idea of what percentage are, are currently on the housing list um, that denotes a need, that denotes a need with, or, of uh, disability uh, and mobility provision? Uh, so I'm curious to know where that 10% fits in. Um, my, my second point would be, you know, noting the strategy on community inclusion and um, the time to move on from congregated setting provisions. E even with universal design, houses are built to baseline standards and this costs organisations in, in, in trying to advance community inclusion in terms of having to retrofit houses. So I think in that terms, it would be really wise for uh, the department to have conversations with uh, great organisations like like Cheevers Town House, for instance, um, regarding their advice and input. Uh, so I think it would be really important to have a discussion with them about how universal design could be made even more universal and inclusive. Uh, mobility champions like Colin McAndrew uh, have have really influenced my thinking on the surrounding infrastructure and the environment around housing to ensure that we have accessibility by design. Uh, he would say that when we make society accessible for people with the least mobility access, we make it accessible for everyone now and in the future. So I think that any planned need for housing provision needs to ensure that it's linked up to the environmental infrastructure surrounding that housing. So I suppose my question would be the role of the local authorities, you know, from a, a social housing and an infrastructural point of view um, and making sure, you know, what what engagement have you had uh, with local authorities uh, for specifically to advance that? And in saying that, I would I would say that my own experience of South Dublin County Council was that they were fantastic and, and really ambitious and open. Um, but I would be keen to know how the, the local authorities are engaging with you on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Thank you very much, Senator Siri Kearney, and for your comprehensive outline there of the need that we really have to meet. I think that's very important to say. One of the priority actions under the National Disability Plan was uh, Action 1.1, which, as I mentioned before, led to the establishment of a steering committee within each of the local authorities. But secondly to that, but also it placed an obligation to put forward a five-year plan for the local authority in how it was going to resolve and respond to the need of those on their list that are in need of special accommodation for disabilities. In terms of your question, it normally runs around the medium of 8%. It can vary to different local authorities, but nationally it's just about 8%. And that's five-year program, really is the local authority responding to the need and shaping it on the ground how they deliver their housing units. And one thing which is really heartening, we know we've come to, you know, and we are experiencing a very difficult time in terms of uh, COVID-19, and as a really reference there in terms of where construction is at, but overall allocations in terms of our disability allocations for housing tenancies has increased by 64% from 2016. That's 2,389 allocations in 2019, from 1179 back in 2016. And they're all across, be it physical, sensory, intellectual, mental health, all those categories which are so, so important, being delivered on the ground by our local authorities, which is so, so important. Uh, also in terms of, we spoke about a new reference to in terms of the various different needs. And I think in Priority Action 5.4, in your mental health sustainability officers, that's something we really have to look at in the next plan in terms of how we can increase that because it's so important to support people in tenancies. That's another huge issue that, you know, it's so easy that 
when you uh, are placed in a tenancy, it can be daunting if you have a disability or a mental health issue. And we really need to get those wraparound supports. And that will be one key part of the next process. And also you mentioned in terms of local authorities, one thing that really opened my eyes was when I was a, a councillor, uh, I think it was actually chair of my municipal district, and the Wheelchair Association set about just an experiment with a number of elected members where one was blindfolded, the other was put in a wheelchair, and you were brought around the town, your own local town, to see what impediments are there to you in terms of that you wouldn't see and I wouldn't see in terms of our eyes walking around. And it's incredible when I experience something like that in terms of the improvements that we really need in terms of our infrastructure, our basic infrastructure, to deliver and unlock opportunities for people. So we're really working hard uh, on areas like that through our local authority system, through our 31 uh, local authorities to try and deliver that, which is so, so important. And I also mentioned in terms of the accessibility of our various different forms, you know, and having them in plain English, that is also very important to ensure that there's no impediment to people in terms of applying and being supported through the application process for housing adaptations to try and give them that choice and independent living.